So Lisa, as the mother of an NFL player, I just got to ask you, what was it like watching the events with DeMar Hamlin unfold on Monday night in Cincinnati and you were watching it live? Yes. Uh, Ed and I just got back from dinner and we just, we flipped the game on haphazardly and we just kind of were half watching and we, we did, we saw it live and yeah, that was really hard to watch. And it didn't, it didn't, the severity didn't hit until they started panning to Josh Allen, um, Stefan Diggs, they saw all the people and they were crying. And it was at that moment we realized this is serious. And that's when you, you just freak out and you just, you feel for the players, his family, everybody. It was, uh, that was just, it was very hard to watch. And obviously I'm uh, sending love and prayers to his family, the doctors, everybody. Cause that was, that was really upsetting. Yeah. We've seen so many injuries, right? Like injuries is part of the NFL and, and that's everybody always says, you know, you know what you sign up for, but when something like that and what happens on Monday night happens, I don't, that's not what you sign up for. That's not a normal, um, it, I don't, I, I can't remember ever seeing that. And I went immediately to Jamar's parents and mm-hmm. right after he collapsed, his mom, Nina was taken down to the field by a security guard. And I imagine for her, it was like time was frozen. It, it probably felt like an eternity for her to get down there. Yeah. Your boys have suffered injuries before. Have you, I mean, what is it like when you're, when you know something happened and you're trying to get down to the field, like, what is that moment like for a mom? Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I remember that night, uh, when I heard that his mom was in the um, ambulance and I, that, that was a little bit of comfort. I'm like, Oh, thank God she made it down. And she went with him to the hospital. Um, that made, I don't know, that was just a little bit comforting, but you just, and then you feel for her watching this, this play out and happen. And it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, that's the scariest thing I've ever heard. And like you said, it, it's unprecedented, but it, I guess it did happen back in 1971, but not really in our time in our era. I've never heard of an actual injury where, you know, it, life and death is at stake. Um, and the only thing I can pull from, which obviously is not the same by any means, but, you know, Ed had a tragic injury. Uh, it was Monday night football, 9, 10, 2001, the night before 9-11, Broncos were playing um, the Giants on Monday night football. And um, it was the opening of our brand new stadium. You know, everything was great. And um, that night, and it was just, I remember I went and I had <laughs> fortunately gotten some better seats than they, than they give the wives. Somebody had offered me some like lower level seats on like right near the 50. And I'm like, okay, great. And um, so I gave up my, my other seats to a friend. So what happened to Ed, it, it wasn't as we didn't, I did not know what had happened to him. I just saw him down. And honestly, at the time I'm thinking, oh, you know, maybe he just got hit. He got the wind knocked out of him. Or I was hoping that was what it was. And I remember looking at all the people's faces in the crowd and they all had a, like a disturbed look on their face. And I guess the security went and grabbed the, my friends that were sitting in my seats up in there and they tried to grab them. They're like, no, 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 it's not me. So it, it, nobody, they did not, they were trying to find where I was. And, and I'll be honest, I did not realize the severity of it because it, it was, it was not very clear what, what had happened. Um, and then I just, I saw the cart come out and I'm like, what is going on? This is so odd. And I was still, you know, just kind of like, oh, he'll be okay. No big deal. And then I remember, um, they finally found me a security guard and we went and, uh, we took the elevator down and the security guard like had a really disturbed look on his face and was kind of shaking his head. And that was when I was like, okay, wait, what happened? And, and nobody knew what happened. No one was telling me what happened. So anyway, we get down and um, then they realized that he had broke his tibia, fib, fib, fibia um, in half, um, that the shin bone and then the smaller bone behind it um, had broken in half, which was, and it was just a complete freak accident, but you know, it was scary at the time. And then he, whatever, anyway, he went and had surgery. And then the next day, 9-11 hit and it put everything in perspective. And um, oh. yeah, so whatever. But yeah, it's that time that when I realized the severity of it to the time that I got to him, it was just, you know, it was the whole world stops almost. And it's everything is slow motion and you're just, you're trying to, to figure it out. And it's, it's just a whirlwind. And I'm sure it, you don't really process it because you're just trying to go through it and oh, figure out what to do. And then the timeline of, you know, when they're doing the surgery and, you know, he had the option of doing it that night or the next morning. And he, he was, you know, under sedation, but he's like, I want to do it tonight and get it over with. And anyway, so it was just, it's a whirlwind. So I can't even imagine what, um, DeMar's mom was feeling and going through. Um, I just pray to God she's, she's coping and, um, just sending him love. And it, it, the only good thing I'll say is I heard today that there was a little bit of positive news. So just we're hoping that everybody's prayers are working. So. Amen to that. Amen to that. And I I do think it's, it's been amazing to see the outpour of 
yeah, love and support it, and prayers. One, I know. I mean, the only and the only other positive thing I spin I could take is that the one thing it did too, it, it everybody was kind of united in praying to God, this guy is okay. You know, you who cares about what team you're on, which fan, fan you're rooting for, your dumb fantasy league, any of that stuff. Like we all kind of united and put it in perspective that these are human beings out there playing the game. Yeah, they make a lot of money. And yeah, you know what? Sometimes they mess up, but my God, they're people, they're kids. You know, he's 24 years old. He's a kid in my eyes. Like it's, yeah. And so let's, you know, have a little grace and, um, you know, let's maybe treat these kids with these people a little bit, you know, not quite ridicule them so hard, <laughs> you know, if they make a mistake or something bad, realize that they are human beings and, you know, sorry about your fantasy, but at the same time, this is real life for these kids. So, and, um, anyway, it was just, I'm proud that the football community and football family all kind of came together with prayers and, oh my gosh, I mean, his charity is up to what is it like 5 million now? 6 million was Six the million last day. I, I know it's, yeah. I mean, that is, that shows the, the goodness and the, the goodness in yeah. the world. So I don't know that's, and it seems to be working because there is some good news. So I just keep hoping that that they can, you know, work on, work on that. And hopefully they get him, get him off the oxygen, I guess is the first thing they're trying to get. So, and he, I guess he's down to 50%. So that's a really good sign. So anyway, keep praying for him, his family, the doctors, everybody. Well said and continued prayers. I, I'm just curious, the last thing on this, Lisa, have you have you, or did you ever wrestle with your sons playing football? Obviously you experienced that moment with Ed. He had injuries throughout his career. You knew what that experience was like. Not that you were going to ever say, no, you cannot go play. And you knew how much the game meant to them, but has it been hard to be a mom who's four sons Mm -hmm. All played football. Um, yeah, definitely. There's some really, really high times and some really, really low times. Yeah, we've I've run the gauntlet of him. <laughs> um, I knew that I wasn't going to be able to um, tell them not to play by any means. So I sort of just compartmentalized and put that out of my head and just pray to God that, you know, everything works out. And I know for a fact, it's not going to always work out and it hasn't always worked out, but that's just the nature of this game and that they love so much and they're so passionate about. You know, I mean, gosh, I, I go back to watching Dylan at Michigan and, he was playing Wisconsin and, um, he got his, you know, Oh, he just got racked by this guy. It was awful. It was horrible. And we weren't at the game. That's another thing too. Mm -hmm. We don't usually travel to the away games. It's just, we can only do so much. And you know, only there's only two of us. And, um, uh, he got just, just racked as he, and then, and then he stayed in and two plays later, he got racked yet again in the head and he doesn't remember any of it to this day. And, and that's, you know, that, you know, makes you stop in your tracks for a minute and think, huh, is this worth it? <laughs> of course. And, um, it, that was, that was really hard. And we just got on a spirit flight at midnight and flew out and brought, got him and brought him back here to Denver and got him some, you know, some really good care. Um, but that was really scary that was a really hard time for us um, and for him. And um, it's, it, he can laugh about it a little bit now, looking back, um, that song, you know, the September song by Earth, Wind and Fire. It's like, mm -hmm. do you remember September 20? And that was the, so, the date that it happened. So he's like, nope, I don't remember September. <laughs> That's his theme song. It's like, nope, I don't remember that one. So, but yeah, that one was, that one was really scary. And that really rocked him. And, you know, those concussions are scary because you don't know how they'll recover. Like Ed had a bunch of them, but I think his, and back then they didn't know the treatment. They didn't know this, you know, what the repercussions of them were. And he was fortunate that I feel like he's like, that's as of now, that's not something he's got other issues. Trust me, but it's not, not the head he's, I think he's okay from all the ones he had, but that one that Dylan had was just, that one was actually particularly really scary. So anyway, but that was the hard. head injuries are the thing that are, are really, I think yeah. scary. Obviously that all of it is yeah, scary. Now the, 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 the head injuries are the ones that, that can really, um, because you do, you know, there's a lot more science out there now, and there's a lot more studies being done, and the, everything is. David Shaw, the former Stanford coach, always used to say, Christian's coach used to always say, the game is as safe as it has ever been, but it's never right. going to be safe. Like it's never going to be a hundred percent right. safe. That's just not. Right. That is not football. So, and I also was thinking back, not just the physical part, but the last thought, just Solomon Thomas's mom telling us, Martha, yeah what she said to T Solomon, if you don't have a mental health issue before you get to the NFL, yeah. you will when you get there and when you leave. So yeah. I just think about all of the, the players who were on the field and watched their friend and teammate get CPR, be yeah. taken off in a stretcher on an ambulance. So I am praying for them that they get the emotional help that they need. Cause it's traumatic. Right. And I think talking about it is a really important thing. Yeah. Um, yeah I agree. So I guess just then, sorry, I keep saying this is the last thing, but 
what was your conversation like with Christian? Um, yeah, you know, I'll, we, we all, I, I, we didn't call right away. Everyone was trying to process it and figure out like how severe is this? Cause you know, you, you, we weren't, nobody knew, but like I said, when we saw the other, other players like in a state of shock and crying, that's when you knew it was bad. But immediately we all started calling each other and talking to you right, right away, all the brothers and, and Ed and I, and we, we all had a different conversation with every one of them. And Christian was like shook up. He was like, he's like, yeah, I have a, I have a, you know, a little bit of a sore ankle from the last game, but that's nothing compared to this. Like, he's like, he's like, yeah, this was, this is hard to watch. And, um, you know, he was, he actually, he was there with, um, uh, a friend from Stanford when his quarterback from Stanford Keller and his, um, girlfriend who they just got engaged and they were there and they all watch it. And Keller comes from a huge football family, Keller Christ, his, um, dad was the, uh, I mean, his, his dad's a coach and uncle was the coach of, um, Wisconsin actually at the time Dylan got his head, um, taken off, but that's a whole nother story. Anyway, um, they, uh, were, they were all there and they were, they were all in like, they were all just kind of shocked. I could tell. And I talked to Christian after he left and he, he was really shooken up by it, really shooken up. So, um, he's, he, the only thing he said too, he's like, the only thing I'll say is like this, it was, it was beautiful to see everybody praying and everybody come to coming together and, and, you know, and like supporting this, this, this kid and his friend or whatever. I mean, I don't know if he knows him particularly, but it's just, we're all in this and it's like football is kind of a family in a way. And, you know, have everybody just really um, stand behind him and behind his family. And, you know, it, it just shows you that people do know what's important in life deep down inside, even though they can be mean on Twitter or whatever, but, you know, deep down inside, everyone is, has some goodness in them and just keep praying for him. So. You That's wish it. that it didn't take a tragedy for the best of people to come out, but yeah. it does seem like the one silver lining to when things happen like this is that you do see the side of humanity that we all know is there. So I, I agree. I thought it was beautiful. The outpour of support. I credit, honestly, I was watching ESPN's live coverage. I thought they all handled it unbelievably Absolutely. well. Yeah. Everybody was, did. Everybody, really Cause it's unprecedented. Nobody knows what to do. No one knows, you know, and obviously everybody, can't speculate. Can't, uh, yeah, yep. you can't speculate. You don't know. And you know, all those, those announcers, the sideline reporters, even the coaches, nobody knew. And you know, everyone was so the few, the only negative thing, everybody was ridiculing the NFL for not canceling right away, but they're trying to process this too. The people yes. in charge, like give them a minute to like, process it and figure out what to do. And they ultimately did the right thing. So, yes. you know, that's, let's not like, I know everyone's upset by what they're watching. So let's not be negative about it. Let's continue to like pray and look, we're all on the same team here for this one. And I think that did all, come out later because there was yeah. a ton of criticism around the NFL and there were, right. you know, it was reported that, well, they were told they had five minutes to warm up and now it's coming back that that wasn't exactly the case. So I do, I'm not an NFL apologist by any stretch, but I do think that that was handled as well and as quickly as probably you could have anticipated when you think about all of the different things people behind the scenes, I don't think realize go into canceling or postponing a game. There's the TV right. broadcast, the NFL PA, the league itself, the, co the coaches and the players who are there, how they're going to handle getting the fans out of the stadium. They wanted to make sure that DeMar got to the hospital safely before they, I mean, they're just so, so many things. So Yeah. And that, and wow. no one was, no one, I bet you nobody prepared for anything like that. Cause that's never, no. that's yeah. No it's one never happened. Yeah. Yep. So uh, them a break. But I was glad they had the ambulance right there. They obviously yeah, had. That's one thing medical. that those, the right, the medical staff was there so fast. That's what gives me hope that he, he could yes. ultimately have a full recovery because they revived him so fast. I mean, what a blessing that they were right there, you know, and they could, they could do all the, you know, use their training and, and, you know, like I said, revive them and, hopefully that'll, that'll be okay. And they got oxygen to his brain fast enough. So yes. I, I hope that's the case. So, but things are looking a little positive today. So I'm, I'm a little bit happy about that. So keep praying. Well, the candles continued lit. prayers. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and Lisa, thanks for sharing all that. I just, no, I, yeah. I was imagining what it was like for me to watch it. And I first thought about his parents. And then the next thing I thought of was, was you and what it's like for yeah, well, all of the parents of people who play the sport and what it's like when something like that happens. So yeah. And continue it, prayers for yeah, they made me want to go to the away games now and feel I kind of felt guilty not being at the away games. So you never know. So ugh, anyway, yep. but yep, you never know. Prayers up. Let's go. Prayers up for Damar Hamlin, his family, and his friends. Mm -hmm.